Now on Fixing the Money Thing. Listen, God has a plan. You got to listen to the timing. You got to walk it out by the Spirit of God. You need to be diligent in any season you're in. People think they can bypass preparation. Friend, you're not going to bypass preparation. Here's how God does it with preparation. You miss the preparation season, you get to do it again and again and again and again and again. Hate your job, you'll hate the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one until you like it. (laughs) Because you're doing it unto the Lord. If he can't trust you in that position, he's not going to trust you with the more influence. So you might as well buckle up and get into it and go, wait a minute. I'm not getting out of this prison until I submit myself to God and I honor him here. That went over really well, I know. It's just the truth. It's so frustrating. You know, you go into, well, I'll get off in these rants here and it just gets messed up. But <laughs> you go into these fast food restaurants, you know, and these young people in there thinking they're just biding their time, right? It's like, I can't wait to get out of here. In fact, they, we had this restaurant, I won't mention it, it's in driving distance, not too far from here. But, you know, they're supposed to close at 11, and by 10 o'clock, they'd have the chairs on top of all the tables. You go, wait, are you closing at 10 or 11? So I go in, knock on the door. I go, are you guys closed? No, we're open. Every table has chairs on it. They're mopping the floor, right? This happens every week. So I went in one day. I said, are you guys closed? No, we're, we're, we're just getting ready to close. You were ready to close when you walked in here. What are you talking about? <laughs> You're hanging around the time clock. You know, until you have the mindset of an owner, God's not going to ever trust you with his stuff. You got to act like you own it. It's not a, you got to help that guy make some money. You got to own it. You got to provide answers and solutions. You want the season to change? You got to change. That was good too. (laughs) All right. So I was praying one day. I, I get frustrated because I'm in business. I'm a pastor, but I have had business for years. I've trained, I don't know how many salespeople over the years and you know, it's, I mean, people have to learn, and I understand it takes time, and they have to learn, but sometimes you just get frustrated because you begin to see the patterns people have, and you, I found out that many times I wanted their success more than they wanted it. I had to learn not to take false responsibility. That was a downfall I had. You know, I'd always, when we first started in the business, if my, my reps, you know, said they needed something, I jumped. Yeah, I took, you know, I got to keep them happy, Right? No, they need to keep you happy. <laughs> that went over well, too. Okay, <laughs> well, moving down the road. <laughs> anyway, you know, I've learned that I can't make them, I, I can't, they have to have a desire to get it done. And so one day I was praying, I was uh, praying in the spirit. I just frustrated one day because I just, I just wanted to help people get it. And I was praying about cre- <sighs> Christians sometimes are worse than the people in the world. I mean, I'm just saying it. They just, because here's why, they think God's going to do it. People in the world know that there's no help. They got to do it. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm serious. I see a clap going on back there, you know. Hey, you know, it used to be, unfortunately, that if the business card had a fish on it, you would never, do not call that business. Now, it's better today. This was back in the charismatic renewal days, but it still happens in church life. Well, they go to church with me. I think we need to be partners in business. Ooh. Let's just back up a minute on that one. Have you checked their car out? Is it clean? How's their house? How do they handle what they already have? You want them to handle your stuff? Check it out. Right? Check it out. But Christians go, well, they go to church with me. You know, they're so nice. They are. Praise the Lord, they're nice. But they may not need to be in business with you. I can't tell you how many fires I've had to put out as being pastors, refereeing people in church. And you know what happens? They get offended and leave. They get all upset. You know, it's just not saying not to be in partnership, but rarely do I ever suggest such. Just if you want to know. So I was praying and God said, okay, he said, go read Hebrews eleven thirty three. Go read Hebrews eleven thirty three. 33. I said, I know that scripture. And of course, you know, that's stupid, isn't it? God tells you to read something. Don't say that back to him. 
because obviously you don't know it, <laughs> or you, you wouldn't say read it. So anyway, it says, who, now this is the, the, the hall of fame, you know, the faith hall of fame in Hebrews 11. By faith, this person did that. By faith, this person did that. You know, so it's a long list. Finally, it comes to the end of this list, and it, it goes on and says, these people all listed who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. And that stuck out. Gained what was promised? That's what I want. I said, this is the whole formula right here. This tells us how to do it. And I said, well, Father, I said, I, I've seen Christians with faith, and I've seen Christians with evidence to the power of God their life. So what's going on? He goes, you missed the third one. I said, what are you talking about? You see, look at the third element of this thing. He said, who through faith conquered kingdoms, or means they, they've, admit they've, they've, had, uh, they've taken territory, they've, they've had some success in faith, they've, they've initiated spiritual uh, faith, and they've, they've had some victories. And, uh, but he says, you've missed the third one, which is what? Administered justice. Then they gained what was promised. I said, oh, you've got to help me with that. Administered justice. Well, justice means to enforce something that's right. In other words, if you conquer a kingdom, it's vacant. The government of that kingdom has been dispelled, and you have to replace it, right? If you mow a field to plant seed, if you conquer it, fantastic. You can celebrate all day long, but until you plant the seed, you're not administering any justice. To, you're, not, you're not changing it. You're not administering change to it, right? Then here he said, here's what my, my people do. He goes, they understand faith. They'll engage the process of faith, conquering that mindset, but they have no clue how to administer justice or how to replace and to administer the, the results they need to see in their lives. Thus, they never have the promise to show up. I said, well, help, help me with that. Well, the definition of administer means to manage and be responsible for the running of a business, an organization, a family, a church, whatever. Some words that mean the same means to direct, control, operate, regulate, conduct, handle, organize, supervise, govern, rule, lead, guide, steer, exercise control over, be in command of, be responsible for, dispense, or apply. So it means you're in charge. It means you have to administer the change to that situation. So if you're going to administer medicine, I'd say two, take two tablets a day. I gave you very distinct and direct administration rules of, of how to carry it out, right? But see, believers think it's all God. So God, by faith, we conquer the kingdoms, but they just at that point, they just stand back. Wait on God. And what happens is the victory you had in faith is there, but you did not bring in the, the benefit of the authority of the administration of the kingdom into that situation to re-change it, redirect it, reorganize it so that it produces what it's supposed to produce. Is that making sense? And so Christians become very disillusioned because things aren't working. They have not gained the promise because they're missing a very important part of the process. And so I thought, wow. I said, you're right. And here's something interesting. If you're going to position yourself to receive the benefit of the kingdom in any situation, you're going to have to administer to your vision the authority of what you see in the vision. In other words, you have to bring, organize, bring it, bring the pressure of justice simply means what is right. You have to bring that to bear on that vision. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.